Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome now here to Mikawa for tonight's B-League fixture between Mikawa Seahorses and Osaka Vesa. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a tight fixture. These two teams are already qualifying for the championship, but right now it's going to be a matter of who gets home court advantage. Remember, it's a two-legged fixture between these two teams. There you can see the traveling fans from Osaka. Also, key matchups in this game, of course, you got the likes of Kyle Collinsworth. He's going to go against... DJ Nubo, it's going to be a very, very exciting matchup. But not to mention, Garrett starts and Hirumo Nakamura. Well, there you can see the standings, of course. Mikawa there sitting in third place just below Osaka Vesa. Well, a lot of people have said that the Western Conference is probably the more competitive with the likes of Utsunomiya Brex, the Chiba Jets, and the Kawasaki Brave Thunders. With the wild cards going to Shibuya and Toyama. But right now, we're going to be talking about Mikawa versus Osaka, which one of these two teams will end up with the home court advantage? Well, if you've only just been enjoying us, enjoying the matchup so far in the games that you have been seeing broadcasted live here from the B-League, as we mentioned, both these two teams ready for a playoff mid fixture, but home court advantage is on the line. There you can see Sun Rocket Shibuya, they will probably most likely match up with Utsunomiya Brex, or Kawasaki Break Thunders, probably We'll get the home court advantage against Osaka Vesa, but that could change here tonight. We could see a different outcome. Well, Chiba Jets led by uh, Yuki Togashi, of course, one of the primetime players for the Japanese national team who we have seen play time and time again at the FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers and more recently the 2019 FIBA World Cup. Well, there are the lineups, of course, for the Mikawa Seahorses. Well, you got number five, Kyle Collinsworth, one of their top players. A promising prospect is number 32, Avi Shaffer. Kosuke Kanemaru is going to be key, along with Satoshi Nagano. Devante Gardner, they were in the starting lineup in their last game. Well, he's got a lot of things to think about, of course. I mean, they got to make sure they protect home court advantage. I mean, here are some highlights from their last game. Of course, they came out with a very impressive victory in which they won 82-69. to well, that was Kosuke Kanemaru there coming off the screen with a jump shot. And what a take to the basket. I mean, that is what Kyle Collinsworth will give you. The post-up play, the physicality, but more or less the finesse in and around the basket. I mean, he's such a prime-time player. Well, Devontae Gardner there dishing the ball off to Kyle Collinsworth. And again, this team just knows how to play with each other. They move the ball very well, but more importantly, they take the right shot. Here's a bit of transition play down the other end. Beautiful basketball by Abby Schaffer. Well, Schaffer, of course, becoming a top prospect. Now you can see defensively Satoshi Nagano there coming up a loose ball and a bit of a nice little fast break play. Well, Satoshi Nagano really has come into his own this season. Very much an underrated player, but again, a nice little dish off there by Devante Gardner. Well, if you want to look at the statistics, of course, I mean, Mikawa Seahorses are averaging about 84 points per game defensively. Teams they're playing against are only scoring 79. From within inside the rainbow, they are a 56% shooting team from the perimeter, from downtown, from three-pointer, that is. They shoot exactly 37%. Free throw shooting could be a little bit better at 76%, but it's about the rebounds. Averaging 32 rebounds a game along with eight offensive rebounds. So they'll be looking to take care of home court advantage here tonight and hopefully leading that into the playoffs. Well, if we look at the visitors coming from the south of Japan in the beautiful city of Osaka. Osaka Vesa led by DJ Nubo, Hiromo Nakamura, Garrett Stutz, number 41, and number 55, Josh Harrelson. Oriogo Sumino as well as a key, crucial player to their lineup. Here's some highlights from their last win, a very emphatic victory for the team from Osaka. Well, here you can see just a little bit of transition play there. Beautiful throwdown time. Well, that is Iwa Brown. Ira Brown having feature for the Japanese national team as we saw in the 2019 FIBA World Cup as Gareth Stutz kicks that one out. Three is up and the three is good from downtown. And that is DJ Newbill, one of the top prospects and a key matchup player that you will see here tonight. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how DJ Newbill faces up with Mr. Triple Double, Kyle Collinsworth. Well, it's going to be very, very key to say Lee Sumino and Donnelly, of course, are going to have to play the high-tempo transition basketball. That is Ryogo Sumino there. But again, Iwa Brown 
throwing it down. Well, that's what you know you're going to get from Ira Brown. He's just such a tough player in the lane with a little finger roll there. I mean, that is unstoppable by DJ Newbill. And that's going to be something Osaka needs to go to in this game. Make sure they get the best out of him because he is just a prime time player. Well, now we're going to take a look at the starting lineups of both these two teams. Well, in the last game now, Mikawa Seahorses, they went with Kyle Collinsworth, Avi Schaffer, Kusuke Kanamaru, Satsoshi Nagano, and Devante Gardner. Well, coming off the bench, they got players like Shinozuke Naguro, Kumagai, along with Takuya Kawamura. Well, it's a deep bench they've got. And again, it's no wonder defensively is what they put themselves in great contention for the championship this season. Remember, they're limiting their opponents to only 79 points per game. Again, Kyle Collinsworth is proving to be one of the top players, along with Avi Schaffer. Well, the key for him is going to be rebounding today. Make sure that he's very aggressive on the boards and make sure he doesn't allow Ewa Brown. Well, Ewa Brown's going to be coming off the bench, of course, for Osaka Vest. But again, he's going to be a high-energy player, making sure that he does his job very, very well. But DJ Newbill, that is one of the tough, tough players here in the B-League. Well, DJ Newbill, of course, one of those players that really likes to play from the perimeter, get his three-point shot going very early. Tough as nails defensively, a very much a defensive nightmare for any team here in the B League. Well, now again, we're going to take a look at the starting lineup. So I'll just be interested to see whether the Mikawa Seahorses change their starting lineup. From their last victory. Remember, these two teams have been high flying this season. And there is a key matchup, of course, as we mentioned. DJ Newbill against Mr. Triple Double. That is how he is known here in the B League. Kyle Collinsworth. Well, they might start calling him Triple Double San here in Japan because he is just simply that good a player. Well, there you can see one of our officials, our referees tonight, is Mr. Takaki Kato. One of the finest in Japan basketball. Who was also a representative for Japanese basketball at the FIBA World Cup in 2019 in Foshan, China. And what a wonderful referee Takako, Takaki Kato-san is. And a good friend of mine as well. Well, Ida Brown, of course. Now you can see that's a high-energy player. I come with DJ Newbill. Well, Ida Brown's going to be coming off the bench. Well, that's interesting that they bring him off the bench, but it's the veteran years that he brings to this team. Again, he's got a lot to think about tonight because he wants to make sure that here on the road they can come up with a big victory and secure the home court advantage. Well, there he is, Mr. Triple Double. There he is the starting lap. Satoshi Nagano, there you can see, he's going to play in the backcourt along with Kyle Collinsworth. Well, it looks like Kosuke Kanamaro along with oh, it's going to be a tough tough lineup for them Avi Schaffer as well he'll also make that along with Devante Gardner who in this game has been moved to the bench which was a very very interesting deploy there again maybe a tactical change I'm not quite sure how they're going to go in this one but it will be interesting to see how they approach this one so as it stands Shinozuke Naguro is going to take up that final spot he will make the start. So it's a small lineup now The Mikawa Seahorses have gone with. I mean, Nagoro did not start in the last game. But this time he makes the start lineup. So Devante Gardner will be coming off the bench. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for joining us here tonight in Mikawa. Right now, B-League basketball, don't go anywhere. Osaka Vesa versus Mikawa Seahorses. Both these two teams have qualified for the championship. But right now, it's a matter of home court advantage here for the championship. And we're set for tip.
Well, it looks like Josh Harrelson's going to jump the ball here for Osaka Vesa. Well, the tip is up and we're underway. We're going to throw this one down low now. Gets a hand up. It's DJ Nubo. Goes baseline. Nubo kicks it out. Tough pass. And we got a three from downtown. The three is up and it's good. Well, Harrelson there knocked that one down. He can do that. He can cause a lot of problems. He can really spread a defense. That's one thing. Mikawa Seahorses have to take care of here tonight. Took his options now. Takes this one down the middle. Another kick out. Well, they try their luck from downtown. The three is up and it's way off the mark. DJ Nubo now pushes the ball in transition. Finds Sumino. They go down low now. Well, tough, tough fadeaway from Brown. Doesn't get it. The foul has been called on the rebound. Well, Abby Schaff has secured the rebound, but again, it was just a slight little reach in there. Just right there. Bit of a careless foul to give away, to say the least. Comes up on screen now, looking for options. Has to give this one up. Well, this is where they got to be a lot more clinical on the ball. They got to find an opening now. Pulls up. Jump shot off the dribble, can't get it. Nubo with a rebound. DJ now looking to push this one. DJ change of pace. DJ a bit of contact, goes off the backboard. And DJ Nubo going to work very early now here. Saka Vesa start the game off much, much stronger. Then the Mikawa Seahorse is now playing very confidently. Both ends of the floor. Gets a handoff now, takes a mid-range jump shot. Sucks that one away. And Abby Schaffer going to work for either the big fella, showing the mid-range. Well, Abby Schaffer is a hot prospect for Japanese basketball. I mean, they're talking about him being a possible future prospect for the national team. It's time to go down low to Josh Harrelson. Harrelson with a fadeaway. And goes like Dirk Nowitzki. I mean, this guy is unstoppable. As soon as he gets it for 15 feet, that fadeaway, you got to put a hand up to it. Goes a hand up now. Splits the defense, goes down the middle, goes in a little Euro step, kicks this one out. Well, he's got to make it wide open from downtown. Got it! Well, Abby Schaffer has come ready to play as he is putting on a clinic so far here in the first quarter. Brown now looking for a handoff, finds Oriogo Sumino. Sumino goes baseline, turns it over. Great defense by Satsoshi Nagano. Nagano now looks like he's going to change the pace. Nagano goes all the way. Nagano kisses that one off the backboard, and all of a sudden, the Mikawa Seahorses have woken up here at home. Saka Vest now will go down low to Josh Harrelson. Kicks this one out to DJ Nubo. One more in the corner finds Ira Brown. Brown from downtown. Ira Brown. Well, Ira Brown sent. Remember, as we mentioned, playing for the Japanese national team in the FIBA World Cup qualifiers in 2019. Very experienced player here in B League basketball. Now Collinsworth from downtown, he can't get it. Schaffer was wide open, didn't pull the trigger, but Collinsworth all the way, bit of contact, missed a layup, gets his own rebound, and he tips that one back in. Well, you gotta love the way Kyle's Collinsworth plays. I mean, he's just so tough, his nails every shot he takes, goes in for an offensive rebound as Ira Brown gets caught in a double team, keeps the ball alive, kicks out. Oh, wide open three, the three is up, and the three is good from Hiromo Nakamura-san. Osaka Vesa are a 37% three-point shooting team. I mean, they will light the gym up if they start to get hot. So it's going to be something the Mikawa Seahorses have to take care of. A beautiful pass back to him, but didn't get a lamp. He fades away in the mid-range. Sucks that one away. Kosuke Kanamoto. Kanamaru, excuse me. My apologies. Remember these two teams now are playing for home court advantage here in the B-League playoffs as Ira Brown from the mid-range. Can't get it. Terrell tries to put the tip back, but Avi Schaffer, very physical, secures a rebound. Makes a handoff now. Kicks this one out. Schaffer, he's made one three. A little bit short on that one. Osaka Vesa comes up with a loose ball, but they, they almost turned it over. Great defense by the Mikawa Seahorses. Well, 
the fadeaway by Harrison, one-legged again. He's trying to put on a Dirk Nowitzki clinic. Couldn't make the shot. Bit of contact now in with the Eurostep. Can't get it. Collinsworth gets his own rebound. Gets rejected. Well, Harrison said, no in me, Casa. Not in my house. Harrison now looking for a low down. They're trying to go down low to Ira Brown. As Ira Brown sees the mismatch, but Ira Brown throws it away. And it's going to be a backcourt violation. I don't know why he's let that one go. It's going to be baseline ball now. Now, if I'm correct, because he didn't touch the ball, that's a baseline play. Why did he do that? I mean, that was just silly. Well, for those that are just watching now, anytime you get a backcourt violation, you want to grab it because he let it run out of bounds. And now it's a baseline ball here to the Seahorses. And they pay the price. I mean... Kosuke Kanamaru lets them know that you got to be smarter than that. Harrelson now lays off, goes in with a finger roll, miss it. It's a beautiful play, but wasn't able to finish it. Now Satoshi Nagano will push the tempo here for the Mikawa Seahorse. Beautiful pick and roll play, bit of contact on Nagano from downtown. Doesn't get it. Oh, they turn it over again. A bit of a poor shot, but it doesn't matter because this guy. Is lighting it up. Well, he is on fire right now. The Kawa Seahorse is playing with all the confidence of Saka Vesa. Again, another turnover. What do we have here in transition? Just able to keep it alive. Another three pointer. Oh, baby! This guy, Arigato Gozamas, he has come ready to play. As now, Osaka Vesa have to call timeout. Well, somebody call the electrician because Kosuke Kanamaru has shut the lights out in this arena. And we are without electricity right now, but we have a timeout. I mean, look at this. There's Satoshi Nagano. It's good. Oh, I missed that one. Excuse me. There you can see. Pulls up the tray ball. Got it. Well, Harrison just threw the ball away. But Kosuke Kanamaru said, I'll take that one. Where now Saka Vest have to be a little bit more clinical now. Try to come up with a good shot as DJ Newbill pulls up from the mid-range. That's much better now from DJ Newbill. Just able to find that space, pull up with the mid-range jump shot, and that was a much needed two points. Again, another mid-range jump shot, way off the mark, but another offensive rebound. For the Mikawa Seahorses. Well, that was Shinosuke Neguro. Turn it over now, and this is where Osaka Vesa have to be quick in transition. Unable to keep it alive, almost turned it over, he kicks it out, the three is up. A silly foul to give away. Well, the foul is on Satoshi Nagano. He's found him in the process of shooting three points, so now it's going to be three, three shots now. DJ Nubo now one of the top players, as we mentioned, here in the B-League. He's 
Saw going to beat three free throws. He's having a very, very good season is DJ Newbill. He's averaging 19.9 .9 points per game along with six assists. I mean, arguably MVP caliber talk. No doubt he's put himself in very good contention for that accolade this season in the B-League. Just stepped out of bounds. He turns it over. He had a bit of a, oh no, a foul's been called actually. So we'll be sideline ball now to Osaka Aves. Right there, the foul has been called. Kyle Collins would have been very quiet in this game. Max down the low block. Good move, couldn't get it. Secures the offensive rebound. That's Garrett Stutz has just come into the game as we got a shot from downtown. Stutz another offensive rebound under the basket. And Garrett Stutz gets the at one. He's now going to go to the free throw line here to make a three-point play. Garrett Stutz is just too big and strong, but again, Abby Schaffer has to do a better job of boxing him out. Looks like Satoshi Nagano is going to go to the bench to take a breather. Well, Kumagai now comes into the game for the Mikawa Seahorses. Garrett Stutz makes a three-point play and ties the game up at 20 apiece. Well, 31 years of age, stands at 213 centimeters. I mean, he's going to be a key prospect player for the championship when it comes to that round. I mean, they need as much support inside as they can. Comes up on screen now, looking for options in the lane. Goes in way too easy with a finger roll. No help side defense. And already, Kumagai making a difference. Howard Brown now gets double teamed in the low block. Picks out the new build. New build pump fix. Finds Stutz. Oh, it's beautiful. I missed it, but it gets a tip back and a beautiful build up there by Osaka Vesa. Great decision by Ira Brown. They spot the double team just to kick the ball out. Pump it now down low. Takes a mid range way off the mark, but another offensive rebound. Abby Schaffer is keeping Mikawa Seahorse, and he stumbles over there. The option now. Ira Brown keeps this one out. Goes down the middle, spin out. Good play all the way to the basket. But again, Garrett Stutz is following everything up. Well, you got to figure Garrett Stutz as the garbage collector because every shot goes up. He follows in with a rebound. And he has been the difference so far for Osaka Vesa. What a player to have coming off the bench. Well, Toshikazu Kato now checks into the game for the Mikawa Seahorses. Well, Toshikazu now is going to have to play in the backcourt and play very quick tempo basketball. This is just a minute and a half now away from the first quarter. There's the alley-oop, it's up. Catches mid-air, couldn't finish it. Good ball movement now, we're under 10. The shot clock hangs in the air, puts up the finger roll. Stutz with a rebound, and now Osaka can push. Good ball movement. Well, had time and space there. It's Donnelly. Picks this one out again. Finds Harrelson. Back to Donnelly. Donnelly got to go up with it. Donnelly gets the M1. And Elliot Donnelly is going to go to the free throw line now for a three point play. And that's the second one here in this quarter for Osaka Vesa. The foul has been called on Toshikazu Kato. Checking into the game now for Mikawa Seahorses, number 54, Devante Gardner. Well, he did have some back injuries at the beginning of this game. You can see him favoring his back, so hopefully he's okay now and ready to play. Donnelly can't make the three-point play, but another offensive rebound by Osaka. Well, Harrison's made one through and takes another one, can't get it. Garrett Stutz fighting for the rebound, gets it again. Kicks out now, Donnelly, time and space, too much, and you can't let him have it. Got to contest it as Elliot Donnelly nails a little teardrop. And it's now a three-point lead here to Osaka Vesa. 
crosses over in the lane, hangs. I mean, too easy right there. And finally, missed a triple double. Kyle Collinsworth makes a layup. Well, in the prime of his career now, 29 years of age. That was a hot screen that set by Garrett Stutz between the legs. Oh, baby! Well, he came down the middle and he completely cleaned up with that dunk. Well, those are the kind of plays that get the fans all over the world very excited. But again, it was the pass, the build up. I mean, you got to love this team. Collinsworth now kicks out to Abby Schaff and takes the mid range. Can't get it. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the first quarter. Osaka Vesa lead this one 29 to 26 over the Mikawa Seahorses. We'll just show you some stats and some highlights here from the first quarter. But as it stands, the two teams here battling for home court advantage in the championship. It's currently Osaka Vesa. Well, welcome back now here to the second quarter of the Speed League fixture between our host, the Mikawa Seahorses, and Osaka Avesa. Remember, these two teams now battling for home court advantage here in the B League Championship. He doesn't use the screen, but draws a foul very early. Again, a very smart play. The foul has been called on number eight, Ryogo Subino. Smart play there by Kosuke Kanamaru. Amaru has a very quick first step and just able to beat him off the dribble. Rob just now tries to make a penetration. Pump fakes, hangs in the air, bit of contact off the backboard. Well, that's a strong, strong play there. Well, the Mikawa Seahorse is now putting in a good effort. It's up one screen, another kick out. It's down low to Harrison. Well, Harrison's got no room to isolate. Finds Garrett Stutz. Garrett Stutz way too short. And Devontae Gardner with a rebound. This is where now Seahorse is happy a little bit more clinical. Now he's made a couple of threes. That one's a long, long two. This guy can shoot the lights out. Well, it's that man again. Kosuke Kanamaru simply on fire tonight. Devontae now Stutz a bit of contact all the way. No foul called. Rebound by Kyle Collinsworth. In the lane now. This is where they have to move the ball now. Kanamaru down the middle. Kanamaru with a little floater. Can oh, I can't get it. Plus a beautiful play there. Little teardrop, but wasn't able to finish it. Stutz now seals off Devontae Gardner. Has to kick out. We can see now Garrett Stutz struggling with the physicality. The three is up. The three is no good. Able to secure the offensive rebound. Now, Saka Vesa on the back foot here, down by two points to the Mikawa Seahorses. Looks out now. Kanamaru has a hot hand. Devontae Gardner pump fakes down the middle. 
Once it got, it gets rejected, gets his own rebound. Pulling the double team, still can't get it. In the lane now, all the way, doesn't get the and one. But he's now going to go to the free throw line hit to make a three point play. The foul is on Devontae Gardner. Well, no help side defense, but he's got to finish that one. That's a wide open layup. That's a potential three point play. Well, DJ Newbill now comes back into the game for Osaka Vesa. Harrison makes the first free throw again. Player who can light it up from the perimeter. Predominantly a center here for Osaka Vesa. Makes it two for two for the charity stripe and ties the ball game up at 31 apiece. Back again, you the Seahorse. You want to get some plays him open on the perimeter. Such an effective shooter. That's Kanamaru. The foul is being called on. Tatsuya Ito, number two for Osaka Vesa. The referee Takaki Kato, one of the greatest referees here in Japanese basketball. Oh, 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 oh. Gardner now trying to back down with a one legged fadeaway, almost got it. Again, nobody going in for an offensive rebound. And now DJ Newbill pushes one in transition. Well, Harrison's made one three pointer, makes another one. Josh Harrelson now from downtown makes the tray bowl. Longsworth now. God tries another three pointer, can't get it. Tatsuya Ito with the rebound for Osaka Vesa. Now Osaka can push. Ito, Ito fakes the pass. Beautiful play, finds Harrelson. Doesn't get it. That would have been a beautiful play there. Now Mikawa Seahorses. This one by three points. Kanamaru now. It's gone a little bit cold. Here comes the transition play. Turn it over. Three is up. And no good. Kanamaru has really gone cold from downtown. Kanamaru Brown a little bit lazy there on the pass. Was unable, but again, great defense by Devontae Gardner for the Mikawa Seahorses. They didn't really have to do much, of course, but again, Kamara Brown probably should be a little bit better in that situation. Well, Koyo Takahashi has come into the game now for the Mikawa Seahorses, along with Takuya Kawamura. A wide open from the mid-range, can't get it. Now the Seahorses will push the transition. Bit of a Euro step all the way. Doesn't get it. Follow up with the rebound. Again, Kyle Collinsworth. Been very quiet in this game all of a sudden. Coming up with the second chance point there for the Mikawa Seahorses. Down low now to Ira Brown. You can see the double teams coming very early. The foul has been called on number eight, Koyo Takahashi. Takahashi. Just a slight little reach in, but I thought he got the ball on that one. I thought that was good defense. Brown now from the mid-range, fades away, doesn't get it. Rebound secured by Kawamura. Now, Seahorses will push this one in transition. Over now, kicks out. 
shot didn't take it. And now with six on the shot clock, got to get something going. Down the middle all the way. Beautiful play. They took that one all the way to the basket. It's Kumagai. Well, Kumagai now coming off the bench for the Kawa Seahorse. They can see making a beautiful play there going to the basket. Down low now finds Harrelson. Picks this one out. Had the three point, didn't take it. Harrison now tries the mid-range, nothing but net, and the big fella, Josh Harrelson, nailing the jump shot. That shot is cash money. Very tough to guard on the pick and roll sequence, because sometimes he goes to the basket, sometimes kicks out, good ball movement. Well, they get a wide open look, the three is up for the Mikawa Seahorses, and he nails it. Well, Koyo Takahashi, and checking into the game here in this quarter, under five minutes to go. He puts the Mikawa Seahorses up by two points. Well, Gardner there, bounce pass. Collinsworth finds Takahashi. Takahashi says, Ayaso Minasai. Beautiful ball movement there by the Mikawa Seahorses. Uh, we got a timeout now as Osaka Vesa want to talk it over. They can see Ira Brown now, relatively quiet game for his standards. I mean, we know what he can offer, as we've seen it time and time again here in the B-League, but also for the Japanese national team. So Osaka Vesa will be hoping at some point he can really start to turn the heat up in this game. Harrison now with the fadeaway, had it on target, but wasn't able to meet it at the rim. Up one screen now, finds up Devante Gardner. Gardner now kicks this one out. Another three pointer by Takahashi, can't get it. All of a sudden now, two teams just slowing down the pace here in the second quarter. Off one screen now, a bit of contact. Nubel hits the side of the backboard. Now, you can see Mikawa Seahorse will try to slow this one down. Worth now backs down, kicks in the corner, no look pass. Well, the mid range shot is nothing but net. Smooth little play by Kumagaya. Oh, well, turnover and again, sloppy play there by Ira Brown. Well, Ira Brown felt he got fouled there. There was a bit of contact, and I think he might be right. Two players came over, they have been swiping at him, putting him into lots of pressure, but. Again, Osaka Vesa had to take care of the basketball. Well, when you want to build a championship team here in the B League, Ira Brown is one of the top players to go to, and he's just phenomenal. But right now, caught again on defense and a beautiful backdoor play by Koyo Takahashi. And what a second quarter he is having. Takahashi, definitely one of the top prospects. Brown now kicks out down low. Nubil now, he's got to make the shot. It's up. DJ Newbill from downtown. And he comes up with a steal. Well, DJ Newbill, both ends of the court. Down the middle. That's a three point, didn't take it. This time takes the mid range and a five point play there for Osaka Vesa. And the Mikawa Seahorses will be infuriated. Infuriated, excuse me. Very disappointed that he gave up five points there in less than 10 seconds.
So Saka Vesa. Well, here's a penetration by Ito. Does so well there. Kicks the ball out. Finds Sumino. And Sumino with a fadeaway. And all of a sudden, Mikawa Seahorses have to call time. I mean, this is beautiful. Fades away. Doesn't get any pressure from Devontae Gardner. I mean, that's beautiful play there by Ryogo Sumino-san. minutes to go here in the first half right now. Osaka Vesa just hanging back at the Mikawa Seahorses. And with these two teams now competing for a playoff spot. No, excuse me, for home court advantage. They're both secure playoff spots. A little fadeaway jumps on the mid-range. Doesn't get it. Sumino now gets up to DJ Newbill. Finds Ira Brown. Ito kicks out, he turns it over. Olito trying to kick it out to Ryogo Sumino. And Sumino was making a cut to the baseline. So it's another turnover now for Osaka Vesa. Looking for a handoff now. Pulls up in the mid range. Oh, it's beautiful, but he can't tuck it away. I mean, that was a neatly little build up there with the dribble. Had a wide open shot. Now Ira Brown hesitates. Sorry, DJ Newbill with the hesitation and the finger roll. And that is why DJ Newbill is simply one of the top players here in the B League. Max down now. Top play by Devontae Gardner. Now, Devontae Gardner, that's what he has to do all night long. Use the size, the physicality, and the low block finesse. He should be demanding the ball a lot more in the low post. We've been settling a lot for three point shots. It's not that you can't shoot the ball from the perimeter, but you got to go to where your bread is, your butter. Now Ira Brown. You see, every time Ira Brown gets the ball, the double team is coming over very quickly. <laughs> Checking back into the game now for Mikawa Seahorse is Satoshi Nagano. And Garrett Stutz, who had a very good play in the first quarter with a lot of offensive rebounds, comes back into the game now for Osaka Vesa. Moves in, gets fouled. And now, foul. You see strong drive to the basket by Tatsuito. Devontae Gardner is trying to say to the official that no contact was made there. As Ryogo, excuse me, Satoshi Nagano discussing there with referee Takaki Gato-san. Ito makes the first free throw. Well, Ito played 13 minutes in their last game. Only had four points. He did have four assists, but again, one of those high energy players that will come off the bench and make a difference. As he makes two for two for the charity stripes. Just over a minute to go here in the first half. Saka Vesa with a one point lead here over the Mikawa Seahorses. Pompex goes in and around, off the backboard, and somehow, some way, 
Again, it's that man, Koyo Takahashi. Gets the shot to drop. Garrett Stutz from downtown. Doesn't take many three pointers. And yeah, Naira Brown unable to come up with the offensive rebound. Jamonte Gardner now backing down, but a foul has been called on Garrett Stutz for a push in the back. It's under the 13th foul, so it will be a baseline ball now to the Mikawa Seahorses. Well, the three is in the corner, and again, that man again, but he couldn't get it to drop. But it gets it still in the process, but Tatsuya Ito diving on the floor. You've got to love the hustle for both sets of players. Well, first of all, what I love about that play is Koyo Takahashi missed a shot. But he, you can see, comes up with a steal. But look at Tatsu Ito, made the turnover quickly, diving on the floor. I mean, these two teams, they want to get the home court advantage. You've got to love the effort right now. The heart, the desire, that's what it means to them. But we got a timeout now with 16.6 .6 seconds left. I mean, Kawa Seahorses will get one last shot here. At the end of the first half. Well, there was the pump fake then off the backboard. Tough, tough play. Again, a beautiful little move there. I mean, he has been unbelievable in this game so far. Koyo Takahashi. Lighten this gym up. Now, with 16.6 .6 seconds left, they will get the last shot here in the first half. Now it's going to be Takahashi. Running down, pick and roll here with Devontae Gardner. Down the middle, goes in with a little bang roll off the backboard, can't get it. There's a bit of time left. He's going to have to force it up. Ito throws it up, doesn't get it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the first half, it's been a tight fixture between both these two teams, but it is the home side. The Mikawa Seahorses, who have a one-point lead over the visitors, Osaka Vesa. Well, we'll just show you some stats and some highlights here from the first half. But go get a drink, go get something to eat, but don't go anywhere too long, as we'll be back very soon for the second half of this B-League fixture between the Mikawa Seahorses and Osaka Vesa live here.
Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, now to the second half of this B-League fixture between our hosts, the Mikawa Seahorses, and the visitors, the Osaka Avesa. Osaka Avesa, you can see they're shooting 12 for 29 from within the rainbow, 5 for 9 from downtown, while the hosts, the Mikawa Seahorses, shooting a very impressive 6 for 14 from the perimeter, but they have not got to the free throw line this evening. And you can see the points in the paint now very, very equal between these two teams. Well, not a lot to separate them, of course. Remember, if you think about the statistics going into this game, both teams averaging about 84 points per game, not giving up too much. Of course, there you can see number 14, of course, for the Seahorses, Kusuke Kanamaru being their top player, followed up by Kumagai, who came off the bench, played some very good minutes. Well, of course, Satoshi Nagano being a big difference. But right now, for the Osaka Avesa, they are being led by number 55, Joshua Elson. And DJ Nubil, who probably has had a bit of a quiet game, but of course, number nine being their best player at the moment. Well, excuse me, number 41. It was Garrett Stutz, came off the bench, played some very, very tough basketball. But the one player who's been very quiet so far this evening has been Kyle Collinsworth. Well, Kyle Collinsworth is known as Mr. Triple Double, so he is having a very tough one this evening. Well, rebounds. I mean, he's not too far. There's a reason they call him Mr. Triple Double. There you can see 6, 7, and 6. Of course, I mean, he's just such a tough, tough player. But, I mean, for his standards, this is probably not his best game. And they know what he's capable of. And there you can see he is right now, along with Avi Schaffer. Well, Avi Schaffer, of course, being a top prospect for Japanese basketball. And they know what he can offer. It's a question of can they get him forward to the national program. Now we're going to start the second half, of course. And again, it is the home side lead this one by one point, the Macau Seahorses. Remember, the key thing for this game is that these two teams have already qualified for the championship. It's a matter of who's going to get the home court advantage. Well, home court advantage will be crucial for these two teams. As they say that the Western Conference, the Western Division, however you want to call it, is the more competitive of the two here in the B-League. But it will be Osaka Vesa who get the first possession here of the third quarter. Well, Hiromu Nakamura will bring the ball up here for Osaka Vesa. Gives this one up now. Down the middle now. An easy layup. Uncontested. Nobody came out to stop him. Well, it's just too easy for Ryogo Sumino. Ryogo. Sumino there made the easy penetration. Again, that's just too easy. The defense needs to be much more aggressive from the Mikawa Seahorses. Shiawa now kicks that one out. They take a good range shot. The shot is up. It's no good. They take care of the rebound. And they try to lock the downtown. It's that mad again. Koyo Takahashi from downtown. Now a couple three pointers in the first half and already getting off to a good start yet again. Carlson now backs down the middle, makes a bit of contact, doesn't get the M1. He's now going to go to the free throw line here for two shots. Outside defense just a little too slow there to recover for the Seahorses. And now will be two free throws. Josh Harrelson has had a very good game, of course, but again, they need to get more from him in the low block. If they're going to come out with a victory. Well, originally from St. Charles, Missouri, played his university basketball in Kentucky. He's actually drafted by the New Orleans Hornets. Played a little bit with the New York Knicks for that matter as well, but right now, finding his trade here in Japan. Some foul has been called off the one. I think they pulled that one on DJ Newbill. Oh, 
tie ball game now. Goes baseline, goes in, doesn't finish it. Gets fouled now, but he will go to the free throw line now for two shots. A strong move by Kyle Collinsworth. Collinsworth made the drive there, did a spin out, went baseline. Oh, it's a bit of a reckless foul there by Josh Harrow. I mean, he doesn't swipe at him, but jumps in the air when he's already up. And at that point, Kyle Collinsworth had already beat him in the air. So it looks like he's going to be okay, but it will be two free throws now to miss a triple double. Collinsworth from Provo, Utah, played his university basketball at BYU. She started his career with the Texas Legends. Had a little brief stint with the Dallas Mavericks in 2017, but really has played the majority of his professional career in the NBA G League before only just joining the Mikawa Seahorses in 2020. make the second free throw, but again, gets his own rebound, and this is why they call him Mr. Triple Double. You gotta put a body on him, you gotta box him out. LA now kicks out, Ira Brown had the three point, didn't take it. Ira Brown throws it down. Some play there by Ira Brown. I was gonna criticize him for giving up the three point shot, but in the end, went for the monster throw down. Wants to get the layup there, Kyle Collinsworth, but now Osaka Vesa will push this one. Down the middle, kicks out to get a three point. The three is up, the three is good. Well, Rogo Sumino san nails the tray ball. Osaka Vesa now take a two point lead over the Kyle Seahorse. They threw up a wild shot, they can't get it. Orelson with the rebound, finds Ira Brown, and Ira Brown one more time with the throwdown. Well, Ira Brown, again, was relatively quiet in the first half. All of a sudden, starting to build a lot more confidence in his game here early on in the third quarter. Throws the way that goes out of bounds, but it will be sideline ball now to the Mikawa Seahorses. They were trying to get the ball on the wing to Kosuke Kanamaru, but he couldn't get open. Great defense by Osaka Vesa. Well, no foul there, pulled on the push up. Put this one out to get a wide open look. The three is up, and the three is nothing but net from downtown. Kashigawa san nails it. Yashigawa had to make that shot. He was wide open. Had to go down low to Ira Brown. Brown baseline gets caught at double team, fades away. What a pass, but I think they're going to call a three second violation. The three second violation has been called on Josh Harrelson. Josh Harrelson just capped out a little too long there in the key. But great defense by the Mikawa Seahorses. And another great pass by Ira Brown there. Just see how he's to pivot out of a double team and come up with a good shot. But in that case, it was a good pass. It's too bad it was a three second violation called. Collinsworth now gets a hand up. What about taking that bit of contact? This is out. He throws it away in a careless turnover by Koyo Takahashi. Well, Takahashi has to be better there on the ball. Has to take care of it. Hesitation now in the middle. Tries another three point. The three is up. This time it's no good. Morelson trying to go up for the offensive rebound. It goes out of bounds now, and it will be possession two in the Dallas Seahorses. Both these two teams, and you can see they got up to a very good start in the first half. Right now, just a bit of a lackluster effort. A little bit of fatigue now as Collinsworth takes it in. Dish off bounce pass down the middle, puts up a jump hook, and gets it to drop. A tough play by Abby Schaffer. Well, he's been relatively quiet since the first quarter. And that would do him a lot of confidence now. 
Harrelson kicks this one out. Finds Ira Brown, the double team's coming. Well, Harrelson was wide open, but they go to DJ Newbill. Harrelson, offensive rebound, just too big, just too strong. But simply, Josh Harrelson is just too good. And the Mikawa Seahorses now know they have to put a body on Josh Harrelson. They're going to win this game. They must take care of the rebounds. Shaffer looks to go pick and roll with Takahashi. Find Shaffer. Takahashi corner. A little bit of time and space. Can't get it. Brown with a rebound. Now Osaka Vesa will try to build on their lead. Newbill goes down low to Harrelson. Harrelson one-legged fadeaway. This guy is simply cash money with a fadeaway. One-legged, simply unstoppable. Morelson is one of those players that just knows how to take over a game because he's just got a smooth jump shot. Looks very tough to guard. Well, Collinsworth tries it downtown, and Collinsworth ties it up. Responds down the other end and missed the triple double. Yeah, the tie game at 60 apiece. Remember the winner looking to take home court advantage. DJ Newbill can't get it. Now Seahorses have a few numbers in transition. They try another three-pointer. A little off the mark that time. Zyra Brown with a rebound. Comes off one screen now. Well, Harrelson, he can make those. Josh Harrelson! Arigato gozaimas! Nails a three-pointer. Harrelson. Again, loves to go to that pick and pop situation. Sometimes he sets the screen and goes to the basket. In that case, popped out to the three point line. That's what makes him such a tough play to guard. So now, Kishigawa now kicks this one out. Happy Shaffer, no tries left in downtown. And it is a shootout right now, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, the lights in this arena are going to pop out because these two teams are shooting them out. Uncle Relson made his last three point. Couldn't get that one, in my word. It would have been a buffet of three-pointers had he made that one. Good tempo now to this game here in the third quarter. Has to go baseline. Has to back down. She was a foul. The foul is on number 13, Hiromu Nakamura. Great play there. The post up by Kosuke Kanamaru there, making that contact. Again, we haven't had too many fouls here in the third quarter because these two teams have just played Renaissance basketball from the prim, the shooting very well from downtown. And now Kumagai comes back into the game for Mikawa Seahorses. Has a mid range shot. He's gone a little bit cold here in the third quarter. Hasn't been able to find that stroke, but right now Osaka Vesa can push this one. Tatsuya Ito checks back into the game for Osaka. Along with Stutz as well. Stutz tries to kick it out, finds Ira Brown. Brown, good pass, finds Ito. Ito sad, but again, it's that man. Well, you got to put a body on Stutz because he's going to come up with every rebound. Garrett Stutz, there you can see, has a very simple job. He's like the garbage collector. Always cleans up after his teammates. He missed shot. All he's got to do is tip it back in the basket, so Abby Schaffer has to box him out. Good good ball movement. Finds a wide open three, the three is up and the three is good. Okoyo Takahashi again lighting it up as he puts McCallum Seahorses up by one point here. It's just over two minutes to go in the third quarter. Brown almost lost it, gets caught in the double team. And it will be baseline ball now too. Osaka Vesa, it's only the second team foul. The left wide open, takes the shot, the three is up, it's no good. Goes out of bounds and it will be Osaka Bowl. I think the officials are going to review that one actually because to me it looked like it came off DJ Newbill. Well, the change has been made, so it will be Mikawa Seahorse's possession. And 
now we're under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. This game really living up to his reputation. Remember, these two teams already qualifying for the B-League Championship playoff scenario, but then it's a matter of getting home court advantage. Shaq has thought about taking the three-pointer bumps. Baseline kicks out, good ball movement. Collinsworth kicks out, the three is up. This time it doesn't go in. It's one of the few situations that you see a missed three-pointer attempt by the Bikau Seahorses. Newville slows this one down. Down low to Stutz. Stutz. Oh my lord, what a play! Well, usually it's Garrett Stutz who's getting on the end of a Tatsuhito pass, but Tatsuhito made a sublime cut to the basket. And Osaka Vesa take a one point lead due to the one two punch between Tatsuhito and Garrett Stutz. Looks up a tough one off the backboard, and Kumagai responds down the other end. It's a one point ball game. Now we're under a minute to go here in the third quarter. These two teams really battling it out. DJ Nugo kicks out. Well, Tatsuhito doesn't take many three points, but this time, Tatsuhito. Arigato gozaimasu. Ito-san, dozo yoroshiku. Looking for a handoff now. Down the middle, another wide open shot. And these two teams allowing each other to let it rip on the perimeter. Ito down the middle, Ito no look pass, finds it, beautiful play, and the layup is good. Or oh, Elliot Dunley there, did a very good job to run the transition with Tatsuhito. And rewards himself with a wide open left, and now the shot clock has been turned off. Kumagai now is going to run this one down, pick and roll scenario. Kumagai with a finger roll, doesn't get it, but a late foul has been called. What are you looking at? And you can see the response from Garrett Stutz saying to the official, what are you looking at? Well, Garrett Stutz has got no arguments. That's a foul. That's a great call by the official. So Garrett Stutz, for a greater player as he is, again, negotiating there with Takaki Kato, the one of the best referees in Japanese basketball. Now a little bit of time now for Tatsuhito. Tatsuhito all the way behind the back. Oh my lord! Well, Garrett Stutz, and again it's the one-two punch between Tatsuhito and Garrett Stutz. I mean, Tatsuhito just goes a whole different speed down the end of the court there. Nobody can guard him. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the third quarter, Osaka Vesa take a four-point lead over the Mikawa Seahorses. And we'll show you some stats and some highlights here from the third quarter as we enter the fourth.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, now to the fourth quarter, the final quarter between Osaka Vesa, our visitors, and the home side, the Mikawa Seahorses. Well, it is a four-point lead now, so the visitors really came alive to the play of Tatsuhito. Garrett does, but right now, Devontae Gardner has checked back into the game, and an easy layup there under the basket, uncontested. Really happy going at each other. He's all the way. Again, Garrett Stubbs follows up, gets a foul. And so sorry, Tatsu Ito, just too strong, just too quick, but Garrett Stubbs following up with a rebound, so it's a tough, tough play there. Garrett sits there, stepping up and hitting the first free throw and keeping Osaka Vess up by three points. And again, it's going to be key how well the young with a big lineup because they've got Josh Harrelson, Garrett Stutz, and Ira Brown out there. I mean, that's a very big lineup for Osaka Vesa. Now Devontae God is playing point guard role for the Kawa Seahorses. Pulls up for a three point. The three is up, and the three is good. Shinozuke Kashikawa keeps Kawa Seahorses within the touching distance and down by one point now. Tatsuhito left wide open for the mid-brain, doesn't shoot too many shots. Garrett Stitz comes up with a loose ball and it's going to be a jump ball scenario. Now that is going to go to possession to the Mikawa Seahorses, I believe. Devontae Gardner again. No need to dribble the ball off the rebound, keep it under control. Correction, actually, the possession is going to go to Osaka Vesa. My apologies, because the Mikawa Seahorse has had first possession here in the fourth quarter. Garrett sits left wide open, way off the mark. And now Devontae Gardner playing point guard role again here for Mikawa Seahorses. Turns it over now. Ira Brown comes up with a loose ball in transition all the way. Lays it up. What a beautiful fast play pass for there. Ryogo Sumino. Again, the pass coming from Ira Brown. Gives Osaka Vesa a three point lead here in the fourth quarter. Remember this game, very crucial to home court advantage in the B League Championship. Monte Garden now all the way to the basket. Goes in and around. I believe he traveled with it. Turnover. Great defense by Josh Harrelson. An option. It's up to Tatsuhito. They had the John Stockton Carl Malone combo. Kicks out, had the three point, didn't take it. Spins around, and a foul has been called. Well, the foul has been called on the ground. It's only the second team foul now for the Mikawa Seahorses. That's a silly foul to give away. Well, the foul is on Koyo Takahashi there for the reach on the spin out. So it will be baseline ball now to Osaka Vesa. Ira Brown now inbounds it. Looking for options now. So goes pick and roll. So kicks out. Wide open look. Brown in the corner. Takes a three pointer. Doesn't get it. Stucks with a rebound. Ito with a little floater. He can't get it. Brown with a rebound. Brown a bit of contact. Doesn't get it. No foul called. Now Mikawa Seahorse is pushing transition. Those are two good opportunities there for Osaka Vesa to build on a three point lead. But right now, Good chance now here for the Mikawa Seahorse. They can time the game up with a three-pointer probably. Well, the three is up. Three is no good. Harrelson with a rebound. And now, Ito in transition. Left wide open. Takes a three-pointer and he gets it to drop. Ryoko Sumino-san nails a three-pointer. Well, he's had a very good game this evening. Stepping up and hitting some big-time shots for Osaka Vesa. 
Giant the ball. Guy tries to it downtown. He can't get it. Garrick Stutz now will try to push. Ito in transition. Ito kicks out. Good ball movement. Stutz with a little teardrop and Garrick Stutz forces the Mikawa Seahorses to full timeout with 6.59 to go here in the fourth quarter. As it stands, the visitors trying to cement that whole corner advantage. The whole, excuse me, for the B-League Championship. Well, this game is definitely not lacking any tempo whatsoever. I mean, these two teams really just firing it at each other. I mean, it's not about the physicality. It's not about the, the fast break pass, but it's just about the three-point finesse with these two teams, how they move the ball and the open shots they get. But right now, Devontae Gardner playing point guard role here for the Mikawa Seahorses. This is where the options now down the middle. Gardner goes up, fades away, doesn't get it. Under the basket, oh. reverse layup, doesn't get the end one. We'll go to the free throw line now for two shots. Makes the first free throw. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Makes it two for two now. Cuts down to a six point ball game. But they got to get a stop on defense right now because Osaka Vesa just leading with a bit of momentum right now. Off the backboard, did he call bank? Well, it doesn't matter because DJ Newbill comes up big time there and makes it a nine point ball game for Osaka Vesa. Well, that is just a big time shot by DJ Newbill. Right now, Devontae Gardner trying to back down and use his size. Finds Abby Schaffer. Oh. Schaffer from the mid range. He can't get it. With another offensive rebound now by the Macau Seahorses. Takes this one out. This is where they have to be clinical here. Make sure they get the right shot, but Gardner backing down. Gardner gets stripped. Now goes out of bounds, and it will be possession to Osaka Vesa. Oh, Devontae Gardner there. Try to spin out, but great hands by Ira Brown. This is a good change now for the Mikawa Seahorses. Because Kosuke Kanamaru comes back into the game along with Satoshi Nagano. Well, these are two players that can really make a difference. There for Osaka Vesa. Now it's another chance here for the Mikawa Seahorses to chip into the depths as they now trail by nine points by that big three pointer by DJ Newbill. 
as the fadeaway by Kanagawa could not get it. Offensive rebound under the boss. He goes up and he gets the M1. Again, it's that man. Missed a triple double. Kyle Collinsworth. Again, you gotta love the fact that every play, every contest, Garrett Stutz is debating whether the foul is on him or not. But it will be an M1 free throw now to Kyle Collinsworth. Collinsworth makes a three-point play, cutting it down now. Six-point lead now to Osaka Vest. DJ Newbill made his last three-point and conquered that one. Garrett Stutz is still saying to the official that he got fouled. Sumino, Eurostep, Abby Schaffler cuts it down to a four-point ball game. And all of a sudden, Osaka Vesa, who were leading by nine points, have their lead cut down to four. An equal timeout. I mean, look at this. I mean, what Sumino? Collinsworth gets up to Sumino. Sumino finds Abby Schaffer. Schaffer with the Euro Japanese step. And all of a sudden, Osaka Vesa have to call timeout. Well, 452 now to go here in the fourth quarter. Saka Vesa will lead him by as many as nine points. But right now, the Kawa Seahorse is just pegging back at them. And it's all live to play for these two teams here. Battling out for home court advantage in the J League Championship. Excuse me, the B League Championship. The foul has been called on Devante Gardner. Tatsuito just plays a different speed, a different style of basketball that makes him so tough to guard. Defense. All the way to the basket, DJ Newville simply unstoppable. Nobody came up to stop him. Four minutes as Collinsworth picks this one out and has to find Sumino. Again, it's a long shot in and out, doesn't get it. Devontae Gardner, I mean, that was a good look, but he's got to knock that one down. Look at the basket again, Harrelson. We got a timeout now. The Gower Seahorses have to talk it over with 3.54 to go. They now trail by eight points against Osaka Vesa.
see now all the way. Gets a foul. He gets the M1. Again, no outside defense. The foul is before the Tatsu Ito. Strong drive to the basket by Satoshi Nagano. Nagano making the contact. Now here we go the free throw line to make a three-point play, probably to cut it down now. Makes a three-point play now, cuts it down to a five-point ball game. Brown now in the low block, fades away, can't get it. Harrelson comes up with it, and Harrelson follows up. And now with 3.29 to go, puts Osaka Vesta back up by seven points. The problem that Mikawa Seahorse is having to not take care of the rebounds at the moment because they've gone with a small lineup against a relatively big lineup. Osaka Vesta has Ira Brown along with Harrelson. All sorts of matchup problems in the low block. Longsworth looking to back down against Brown. Takes out. Satoshi Nagano now pulls up for a three pointer, takes it, doesn't get it. Now, another chance here for Saka Vesa. Go down the middle, kicks out. In the corner, 14 on the shot clock now. No need to rush a shot here. Two kicks out. Ira Brown from downtown, and Ira Brown nails a three pointer. And it's a 10 point ball game. It's a Saka Vesa. Building so much momentum here at the right time. And Kawa Seahorses, one foul away from getting in the penalty. There you can see Kyle Collinsworth draws a foul against Ira Brown. A great change of pace there by Kyle Collinsworth. Missed a triple double. Just catching Ira Brown off guard. Gano off one screen, finds Devonta Gardner. Gardner puts up a little one handed fadeaway, can't get it. Gano Saka Vesa just going to slow the tempo down here. No need to rush it. When the time is on their side, they have a 10 point lead here with 2.15 to go. Almost 10 on the shot clock. Finds Orelson, kicks out. Brown made his last three. Doesn't get this one. Orelson can't get the rebound. Collinsworth looks like he's going to push. Well, finds it wide open. That's too easy. I missed a layup. Ira Brown secures a rebound, and now we're under two minutes to go. Again, Osaka Vesa got away with that one. What a wasted opportunity for the Mikawa Seahorses. Harrelson getting a handoff. Well, Harrelson, he's been deadly, and Josh Harrelson nails the jump shot from the mid range. This guy is simply Mr. Spectacular. 30 to go here in the fourth quarter. Saka Vesa with a 12 point lead. Devontae Gardner backs down, low blocked him. Doesn't get the and one, but he will go to the free throw line now. With two shots. Devontae Gardner at the free throw line right now for the Macau Seahorses, originally from Suffolk, Virginia. Plays University Basketball with Marquette. Well, his first professional job in basketball was in France, but moved out to Japan in 2015, where he started with the Nishinomiya Storks before playing for Niigata Algadex, who won the top teams in B League history. He makes a second one. And again, really has settled to life here in Japan. Right now, his team trails by 10 points. To Osaka Vesa, there's over a minute to go here. Nubil kicks out. Alitu made one three-pointer tonight. Makes another one. Tatsuhito. Ayaso Minasai by Tatsuhito. Well, we talked about he doesn't take many three-pointers, but there you can see, nailed that one from downtown. Kick out coming from DJ Newbill there. Tatsu Ito with the big time tray ball. Well, 
timeout is not reported, excuse me. Slight delaying game, but now just over a minute to go here for the Mikawa Seahorses. They have to get something quick going to the basket here. Sumino gives up the Gardner. Had the three-pointer, didn't take it. Now we're under five on the shot clock. There's the wide open look from downtown. The three is up. The three is no good. Harrelson with a rebound. Harrelson finds throw down time. Ira Brown, throw it down, Ira. Throw it down. 15 point lead now to Osaka Vesa. This game is pretty much wrapped up in the books. Osaka Vesa, one step away from reclaiming the home court advantage in the B League Championship. This is a crucial, crucial win for them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do thank you for joining us here in Mikawa. It's been an exciting fixture. Remember, more to come from these two teams, but you know what a game it was. It was neck and neck right to the fourth quarter. In the end, it will be Osaka Vess. Shot clock runs out there, but we do have six seconds left of regulation, which I'm pretty sure the Mikawa Seahorses are just going to dribble out here. Dallas Seahorses, they lose this one. It's at the end of this game, it is Osaka Vess 102, the Dallas Seahorses 90. We thank you for joining us here. We'll show you some stats and some highlights from what was an incredible game. Really, it was the play of Batman, Ira Brown, Josh Harrelson. And not to mention, of course, Ryogo Sumino, DJ Newbill, and Garrett Stutz. But for me, the best player had to be Tatsu Ito. That man is arguably... Mr. Hayakusan, the Mr. Fast. Just plays a different tempo, different style of basketball that makes him so hard to guard. Again, such a tough, tough basketball player. Well, there you can see the fourth quarter belonging to Osaka Vesa. There was only one quarter in which the Mikawa Seahorses won, and that was the second quarter. I mean, they did go into the halftime interval with a one-point lead, but Osaka just turned it up a different level in this game. Caused a lot of problems for the Mikawa Seahorses. Well, the home fans, sorry, the visiting fans there from Osaka applauding their team well, not much to cheer about for the home fans because they now know that home court advantage is going to be difficult for Mikawa Seahorses. Well, it was a very, very good ma matchup and a very, very good fixture. But in the end, Mr. Triple Double, Kyle Collins, who had a relati relatively good game for his standards, but just wasn't enough to get them over the final hurdle against Osaka Vesa. Well, now we're just going to listen to the coaches of these two teams. はい、え、先ほどのアシスタントコーチ、え、アウェーでのゲーム1勝利おめでとうございます。はい、ありがとうございます。え、非常にハイスコアなゲームになったかと思いますが、今日の試合振り返っていかがですか。そうですね。ま
ありがとうございます Well, the words from the head coach, of course, was that the opposition had a lot of offense, but we played very well defensively, and that was key to our victory. But more importantly is that we moved the ball very well and very efficiently. We didn't play too well against Mikawa in the last three games, but we studied that game very well, made some adjustments, and that really paid off today. Well, big words there from the head coach of Osaka Vesa. There you can see the Osaka fans really paying homage to Ira Brown, a fan favorite. Remember, also having featured for the Japanese national team in FIBA international competitions. And here he is, the man of the hour, Ira Brown. Hi, Ira Senshu. Game one, Shori, Omezo Congratulations for the win. How was today's game? Today's game was great, actually. We got to a really slow start, and obviously, Kanamaru is Kanamaru, who played tremendous. Avi played great. So uh, and also uh, a lot of the other players. So, but we were able to come out with the win. We played hard in the second half and and won the game. まあの今日の試合ではちょっと試合の入りのところでまあスローに入ってしまった部分がありまして、金丸選手、阿部選手、またあの他の選手にもちょっとシュートを決められてしまったんですが、まああの後半しっかりと修正をしてまあ勝つことができてとても良かったです。はい、えー、今日はアイラ選手、手元の資料ですと12得点、10リバウンドの大活躍でした、さらに今日の最初のスリーポイントで3000得点を決めました、このあたり、いかがですか。えー No, I feel great about it. It's a great accomplishment. I uh, didn't know it, but uh, I'm just happy that we're able to uh, have home court advantage uh, so that we can bring um, playoffs to uh, Osaka. It's been a long time, and so I'm very, very excited uh, for uh, playoffs. もちろんそのアゲポヨですし、あのもあのそれよりもあのプレーオフのホームコートアドバンテージを獲得することができたこと、このホームのファンの前であのプレーをすることができるチャンスを掴んだこと、まあこれがすごく本当に嬉しく思います。はい、はい、陽気なアイラ選手、ファンの皆さんに一言お願いします。Um, Osaka fans and everybody else,、uh, we're very, very happy to get tonight's win.、Uh, we're coming home, so be prepared to、uh, yell, scream.、Uh, we did this for you guys. You guys are well deserving of it. We love you all, and we'll see you for the playoffs. あの今日の勝利は本当にファンの皆様のために掴んだ勝利です。あのホームコートではあのぜひ熱い応援をよろしくお願いします。ファンの皆様のために一生懸命プレーしたいと思います。<笑>はい、ありがとうございました。明日の頑張ってください。はい、お疲れ様です。Well, there you can see Ira Brown, a lot of personality, definitely a fan favorite here in Japan. And of course, this Japanese has been improving very much. He's such a great player and a great person too, is Ira Brown. You can see how much the fans love him. He is definitely a household name here in Japanese basketball. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, what a game it was between these two teams. I mean, they really just battled it out and really competed. I mean, Mikawa Seahorses, they started very well. They played some good stuff, but again, it just wasn't enough to get them over the final hurdle here against Osaka Vesa. Again, what a great matchup it was. Tough, tough play from both sets of players, but right now, here are some more highlights from the game. Big, big time three-pointer there, of course. You can see both teams really settling in. And again, it was just that kind of game. Both taking good shots and really in the lane there. The big time dunk, the no-look pass, and an unbelievable play there by Garrett Stutz.
Well, Stutz just doing a very, very good job there, of course, on the ball. And that was a big three by Harrelson. Harrelson just knocking down the tree ball from downtown. And it was that kind of ending. Beautiful build-up play here, but look at the transition play. Able to go for the Japanese Euro step and the follow-up there by Mr. Triple Double. Again, another build-up play there. The perimeter shooting was very, very big from both these two teams. And again, another kick out there. Good ball movement. But Ira Brown down the middle with a beautiful flush. A throwdown time by Ira Brown. But again, look at the fast break here. Just a good build-up. Again, a slight push off there, but got away with it. A nice little trade ball from downtown. Nailed that one big time. 